I grew up in a family with five boys and I'm the oldest. My dad had about 25 acres of land in Holland and uh, well it wasn't just wasn't big enough it wasn't to my liking you know like he had uh, dairy and he had pigs he had chickens a thousand chickens it was just an old McDonald's farm but you know always a good living we always had lots to eat when I first came over here it was simple you could just you know whatever you wanted to do you did it I know all my friends worked here um, and my brother's friends so it was a lot of fun because everybody was here we'd all be swimming in the pool and everybody be going out to work we'd be playing volleyball a lot of times at lunch so we had high energy back in the early 80s i planted some 85,000 trees i used to have a bunch of ornamentals and uh, we, we got it all done and, and, and it paid 100 acres that's how we started well, we grew into probably between four or five hundred acres and, uh, you know with the whole family at the end of the day you'd see the kids uh, buy motorbikes you know, and they were getting paid really well, like more than uh, most kids would get paid at that time. Like I know some, one of the kid guys said to me, you know, your dad paid me really well. I said, yeah, but you were doing the job of an adult. So why wouldn't you get paid the same as an adult? Uh, whatever hours it took, you know, like it was hard work just to get everything started. And, uh, I, I wasn't afraid of work. I was taught to work when I was a kid. Uh, when we grew up on the farm, there was no time for sports. Uh, we always had work. We had fruit to pick, or cows to milk, and whatever else. So my parents, they really taught me well. After the summer, he'd come out and he'd have his brand new motorbike and so proud. And he didn't have to ask his mom and dad for that money. He had that money. It empowered him, and it empowered me too. When I first came out here, I worked for other fruit farmers. But you couldn't make enough money, you know, like to, to save up for this. And then we had a child. She said, well, we can't afford to buy butter. Well, I grew up on the farm. And I says, I better find a different job. So I, I started working for Ford Motor Company and I bought this farm at the same time. So that, you know, it's good income. And that was the hardest time of my life was to quit that job. Because back in 74, I think that's 74, yeah, 74, 75, I quit there or I, I gave my notice. They offered me a $26,000 job a year back then. And I says, am I gonna go farming or I'm gonna keep working for Ford Motor Company? So I, I, we made a decision and I, I, uh, I stayed with the farm and I'm glad we have, you know. I went through for uh, the University of Guelph for a couple of years and I was traveling, backpacking and I always wanted to be a farmer, but I had an older brother who um, had a heart aneurysm and passed away. And my dad got really sick after that because he was so saddened by it. And that left uh, me kind of opening the mail. I decided to move home, live with my mom and dad because it made sense to help them out. And uh, I just started opening the mail and I didn't know anything about it. Like I knew how to farm, but I didn't know anything about the business side of things. It was a big farm. It, he built it for two to take over, not for one. So he said, uh, you know, it's too big for one guy, Brian. You're not gonna be able to handle this. I said, well, you work at selling it and I'll work at trying to make it go. And at the end of the day, he didn't have to sell any. We, we made it go. I think I was about 24, 25. I was running this farm and getting up and, and had like probably sometimes 20 to 30 workers that were, I had to like take care of, make sure that everything was going right. I took over the company when I was, I think I was about 33, 34. Started running, the, uh, owned the company and he sold it to me. You gotta hand the reins over to the younger people. I've only got 150 left, the rest is all with the kids. And I came over here in 69 because we were traveling. Aussie girls were traveling. We were traveling all over the world. And St. Thomas General Hospital didn't have enough registered nurses. They didn't have any. So they're hiring Irish, English, um, India from India, uh, um, New Zealanders, Australians. As a Canadian, we're all equal. Now some of us might not work, and if people are lazy, well, and I feel sorry for them, but I, you know, but anybody that can't work or is incapable of doing anything, I think as a society we need to look after them, and we are. He went really heavily into municipal politics, which was more, uh, more his cup of tea. He he liked doing that. Uh, 
there four or five years ago. Uh, I was uh, vice chair for the international flowering mats here in Elton County, St. Thomas Elk. I, I really enjoyed living here and, and doing things back for the community, what, uh, what the community has done for me, or, you know, like, it, we're all working together. Like, Small community. We had some neighbors say, oh, well, you got to live here for 100 years before, you, before you're accepted. Well, I guess I proved them wrong. Canada's good. Canada's been very, very good to us. We really have. I'm working every day. But if I want to go fishing, I'll go fishing.